Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Good morning to you today. God is the good God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we magnify you this morning. We give you glory this morning. We honor you, God, for your goodness and your mercy this morning. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do for us today. We give you honor and glory this morning, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you for every prayer that's already been answered. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help us to believe, God. Help us to believe. Father, we cancel our unbelief. Yes, God, all unbelief, God. God bless you. Good morning, Ruth. God bless you. Share the broadcast. Share the broadcast so somebody can somebody can be set free today. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we give you glory this morning. We give you honor this morning, Father. God, we give you glory this morning. We give you glory this morning. Oh, God, we thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We come in and thanking you for every answer prayer this morning. Every prayer, Father God, that's been already answered, God. We come in before you, God, already knowing that every prayer that we have prayed have been answered. Father, help us to believe. Help us to stand on your word. Help us to stand on your word, oh God. Help us to stand on your word. Help us to stand on your word today. Help us to believe, God. In the name of Jesus, help us to believe, oh God. Help us to believe today. Father God, we thank you. We thank you this morning. We magnify you this morning. We give you glory this morning. Hallelujah. We give you glory this morning. Oh God, help us, Father, to stand on your word, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Help us to stand. Help us to stand, oh God. Help us to take a stand against the wiles of the enemy. Help us to take a stand, Father. Help us to take a stand, not to, to be wavering, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Great arising this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Help us to take a stand, oh God. Help us to take a stand on your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. Father, bring in the bring those back into the fold that's going back and forth, God. Undecided, backslidden, backslidden is what it is. They're backslidden. They're back out there doing what they're not have no business doing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, I ask you that you will move by your spirit even now. Move by your spirit. God bless you, Crystal. God bless you, um, uh, Sherry. God bless you this morning. God, even now, begin to move by your spirit. Begin to move by your spirit, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, we call them out, Father. We ask you, Lord, that you bring them back into the fold. Bring them back into the fold, God. The time is near, Father, and the time is dark. Father, I pray that they come back into the fold in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you this morning. We give you glory this morning. We give you glory this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Please share the broadcast. God bless you, Bridget. God bless you. Share the broadcast. I know I, I say this all the time, but a lot of people don't share. And there are people out there that really needs the word of God. They really, we're living in a time that people really need the word. And you don't know when you're sharing it to your page, who's really getting the word. Because people may not come to the God right away, but once they hear the word of God, they'll begin to turn their life over to Jesus. So share the broadcast because people need to hear the word. They need to hear something. People are really going through stuff, and we don't even know how, how hard it is out here for those that are not serving God. But it is their choice. But if they can just hear something, they can hear something so they can come into the fold, that will be a blessing for them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they will hear something that, that will cause them to, to trigger their spirit, Father God. That will cause them, Father, to turn their life around to you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. That there's something they can hear. That will cause them, Father God, to say, here I am, Jesus, use me. Use me, God, because 
there's a lot of people that are very tired. They may not say it, but they're tired. They're out here struggling. Some of them won't ask for help, but they're tired. They really are. They're tired. Just because you can't see it in the natural, if you open up your spiritual eyes, you will see. They're lost. And because they're lost, it's our job to, to, to minister to them. And it's not going to cost you anything to share it. It's free. It's free to share. But a lot of us sometimes are ashamed to let people know that we're saved and we sanctify, filled with the Holy Ghost. And we need to let people know, yes, we saved. Yes, we're filled with fire. Yes, we cast out devils. Yes, we speak in other tongues. And yes, we stand for Jesus no matter what comes. Because a lot of, a lot of people are waiting on us to let them know that Jesus is real. Everybody don't know God. And everybody has not word, has not been uh, acquainted with God yet. They haven't. Even though it looks like it. It looks like it, but they haven't been acquainted with God. They have not. They don't know him. They don't know who he is. They heard of him. They don't know the real God. They don't have not experienced the fire of God. So, Father, we thank you this morning. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for each and every person that's on here, every child of God that's on this virtual room today. We bless you this morning. We thank you for them. We bless you. We bless you. We magnify you, God, for all that you're doing and all you're going to do this morning. We thank you, Father, that you will remove me, Father, that you will be completely you and not me, oh God. I thank you for your mercy and your grace this morning. Father, we you graciously come to you and ask you, Father God, that you will meet every need here today, God, that you would just move by your Holy Spirit, Father God, that you would use your vessel today, Father, to bring an answer, a prayer, an answer to a prayer, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, I just thank you. You're such a gracious God. You're such a loving God. And we thank you for the love that you have for us. Father God, pour your love out on your people today. Father, show your grace and your mercy to them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory and the honor this morning. In Jesus' name, oh God. Father, we thank you for answer prayers. Answer prayers. Prayers that you already prayed that's already answered. That you are already answered. Hallelujah. I want to read something about that. And then I want to talk to you guys about um, talents and gifts. Because I, I think some people don't understand talents and gifts. And God gave me that yesterday, but I didn't have the time. God bless you, um, uh, Sandra. God bless you this morning, woman of God. I didn't have a chance to, to do it, but God had dropped that in my spirit. Talents and gifts. Hallelujah. But we're going to thank God today for answer prayers. God bless you, um, Dorothy. God bless you. We're going to pray. We're going to pray and, 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 and we're going to believe God for prayers already been answered. You don't have to keep asking him because he heard you before you even prayed. As we trust God for a particular request, topping it with prayers for thank, thanking God. For answer prayers, show your heart gratitude. Prayers show your heart gratitude. You lift, we lift, we lift us up above our adversaries today. You exalt us more than we could ever imagine. Lord, we thank you for everything. We thank you for everything that we have asked you for. When many said no, you said yes. When I was denied, when you was denied my right, you gave me straight away. Why won't I recognize your love upon me? Lord, I am so grateful. We got to start being grateful. Wealth and honor belongs to you, oh Lord. You reign from generation to generation. We give you thanks and praise for your holy name. We give you bounty, bountiful thanks to your holy name. For your will always answer our prayers. We acknowledge your mighty works in, in our lives. You turn our situations around from grass to grace. You lifted us above all adversaries. Hallelujah. When I looked behind and saw what you have saved me from and foresee where I am, where you are taking me, I have nothing to say but big thank you. I mean, when we go through trials and we start looking at what God brought us from, we just need to look where God brought us from. And we can just start thanking God. We might be in a current situation right now, but if you just look what God did for you before, he, he's never left you. He's never, never, ever, ever let you down. So why will he let you down now? He won't. It was, it has been your grace all a while. It's been his grace that has been speaking for us. 
while won't I appreciate you. Thank you for your grace and abundance over our life. Lord, I forsake all my boastfulness and all that you have been saying to me. All you have been saving me from. I'm sorry, let me read that again. Lord, I forsake my boastfulness for all that you have been saving me from. I know I am not the one that saves myself, but you are divine help. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying he just wants us to be thankful. He wants us to be thankful. There's some of us that are murmuring and complaining, y'all. I have to give you what God is saying. You're murmuring and complaining. You don't see the, the things that you're asking God coming to pass, and you're upset. Some people are upset about it. And God is saying there's no need for that because I'm already answered the prayer. When Daniel prayed, remember, Daniel prayed. And when he prayed, the priest of Persia held his, his answer. For 21 days, God's already heard you. Some of you are being prepared for the answer. Some of you are still being uh, being molded. You're still in a potter's wheel, but he's not forgotten. I hear him saying he's not forgotten. He's not forgotten anything. Count it all joy. Everything you're going through, count it all joy. Because it's a, it's, it's, you know, it, it's it's an answer to every problem. You know, we think that bad things, sometimes bad things happen, but it said the Bible said all things work together to them to love God according to his purpose. Even though it's bad, it looks bad, it's not bad. Something good is going to come out of that situation. But because we can't see it right now, we get frustrated. And I, I'm going to be honest, I get frustrated too. But I'm learning when I get frustrated to go to the Father and say, I am frustrated. I don't understand what's going on. Please help me. Please. And I'm telling you, he answers that quick. You relieve me to focus on what you think for me instead of what others think of me. You gave me the rest of mind and assurance. Thank you, almighty father, for this. May I continue to keep my eyes on you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. You make me stand straight and confront my adversaries. It's time for some bonus. It's time for bonus. And then the atmosphere, uh, uh, shift this atmosphere, Father God, shift this atmosphere, shift this atmosphere, because God is getting ready to put some bonus in some of you. There's some bonus that is coming for you. And God is going to impart you with this bonus. And when you are not going to be standing back, I feel the Holy Spirit. God is getting ready to give some people some bonus. There's some of you that's going to be very bold. And don't back down because it's him that gave you that. I remember I used to let people say whatever they want to say to me. I used to let them do whatever they wanted to do to me. They used to just do me any kind of way, say anything they wanted to say with me, and I wouldn't say nothing. Guess me. I, in the world, I was a fighter. I don't care how big you was. Come on, let's go. I was, I was not the one. I was little. I was less than 100 pounds. I was. I show you pictures, you be like, that couldn't be Pastor Rosemary. You can see the bones. You can see bones. But let me tell you something. I wasn't the one. It says, I may look bad in the natural, but God will get the glory in those situations. Yes, I'm telling you, I was skinny, skinny, winny. And I didn't care. I didn't care if you was 200 pounds. You come for me, I'm going to come for you. And if I couldn't beat you naturally, if I couldn't beat you with my two hands, baby, you better make sure there ain't a rock, a brick. Uh, anything around me is going to upside your head. And that is God truth. I ain't got a lot. I'm telling you. I was skinny. But then it came to a point when I became a Christian that I wasn't bold. I would just let people just dog me out. And one day the Lord put a boldness on me and I start speaking up for myself. So it's time for you to start speaking up. Come out of agreement with some stuff. Father, even right now, Father, if we came up with, uh, if we touched and agree or we uh, agree with anything. We're coming out of agreement today. We're coming out of agreement with anything, knownly and unknownly, that was said, Father God, that we should have not come in agreement with. We destroy that agreement now in the mighty name of Jesus. We come out of every evil, wicked agreement in Jesus' name. We come out of it today. We come out of agreement with sickness. We come out of agreement with poverty. We come out of agreement with every evil works that the enemy has tried to put on us. Ungratefulness. We come out of agreement. We come out of agreement today. 
Lord, we present ourselves before you with a heart full of thanks. We want you, it says, we want to thank you for things seen and unseen, which you have done in our lives. We just want to be thankful today. Am I not the, I'm, am I not in the hospital? We're not in the hospital. I'm not in the mortuary. I am not in the cemetery and I am not in jail. So I say a big thank you, God and heaven. But even in jail, God is working things out. God is still molding. God is still fixing. Because see, God knows where we're going. God knows where we're going. And some of us are hard headed. Some of us have a hard head. And some of us, it, it's like you keep, it's like you got a hammer. You keep pounding, 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 pounding. And don't, they don't, don't want to listen. Some of us got children like that. I did. Okay? Just don't listen. Don't listen. So God says, okay, since you won't listen, listen, I'm going to put you in a situation where you ain't going to have a choice but to listen. You're going to have to wake up when they tell you to wake up. You're going to have to eat when I, they tell you to eat. You're going to have to sleep when they tell you to go to sleep. So everything is not bad. Some things is for the good. I know for my son, everything that happened for him was for his good. Because he was headed a very, very, very bad road. I ain't going to say everything, but I'm going to tell you, he was headed a bad road. I am hot, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry, you guys. Hold on. I thought I turned the thing on. It's hot. He was headed to destruction. He was. Even though it hurted me to have to see him go through what he went through, even though it hurted me to have to sit there and listen to all these lies, he was headed the wrong way. And because he's a good father, God bless you, uh, Pastor Julia, uh, because he's a good father, he could see beyond what I could see. But I remember years before this, all of this came about, the Lord showed my, me, my son, I never told anybody, Show me my son in an orange suit. God will warn you about things if you just listen. You show me him wearing an orange, an orange suit. And, and one of them orange suits that you wear in jail, he showed me that. And I prayed about it, but I prayed, but yet still God had to have his own way. And what I'm saying is, you reap what you sow. Now, I don't know everything he was doing, and I'm not going to get up here and say, well, my son was a saint. No, he wasn't. I don't know everything that he was doing, but one thing I don't, one thing I do know is that he didn't murder anybody because it's not in him. There was too much God in him for him to go that route. I, I am part of too much Jesus in it, God in him. And you know that God, when you have God in you, really have God in you, there's some things that God will not allow you to go and do. So I know for a fact that that that's not him. He, he's never been that type of person. His character. I, and I've got confirmation over and over again by prophets, Pastor Belitra. God even showed it to me. Showed me he was wearing, I asked God, was he innocent? God showed me in a dream. He was dressed in pure, I never seen pure, pure white. I never seen white that pure in my at my entire. There's no, no kind of that white pure here. He showed it to me. So, because my thing with, my thing is, I told you guys, there's no black and white with me. If you did it, then you're going to suffer the consequences. I'll be there for you, but I'm not going to go down for you if I know that you've done something wrong. You're going to have to suffer the consequences. That's just me. I've always been like that. With everybody, my kids, whatever. You wrong, you wrong. I'm not going to sit up there and, 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 and try to defend wrong. Because God sees everything. But what I'm saying is, whatever is going on in your life, it's all for the good. Just thank him for it. Don't complain. Don't murmur. It's all for a reason. It's for a reason. God knows what he's doing. And I also hear the Holy Spirit saying, I know there's been a lot of talk. I know that there is darkness coming. Um, I'm just repeating what I'm hearing. There is darkness coming, but the children of God are going to be protected. I hear him saying, you're going to be protected. If you're walking up rightly before him, you're going to be protected. If you're doing what he called you to do and you in his will, you're going to be protected. Don't panic. You're going to be protected. But prepare. I hear him say, prepare. Just prepare so you can be prepared. But you're not going to have to be, I'm sorry, you guys, it is hot. Um, you don't have to panic. He's going to protect us. 
because there's a lot being said. Y'all better go do this. And yes, you need to go get your water and all of that stuff that you need. Um, you know, um, packaged fruits, you know, uh, tuna fish, crackers and all that. Yeah, you need to get that because something is coming. But just know that he has your back and he's going to look out for his. If you belong to him, he's going to take care of you. Now, for those that don't belong to him, I don't know. So we gotta we gotta know that he's a, he's got us. So Lord, you we thank you. It says, Lord, we have a we have done so many marvelous things. You have done so many marvelous things in our life, and even in the lives of the, our loved ones, which we can't just comprehend. Do you know the whole time my son has been in jail, he's been protected. He has not had not one issue. He has not had not one issue. The enemy has tried to come against him through the guards, but God stood up for him. God is still protecting him. God's angels is in that room with him because I see the angels of the Lord right now in the spirit standing in his jail door. Oh, God, I see you, God, I see you. So he's protected. Who is it that you need God to protect? Send your angels. Send the angels of the Lord. I can't wait to read this angel book because when I get done reading this angel book, you guys are going to be able to activate these angels and be able to understand what they really do. Lord, you have done so many marvelous things. He's done so many marvelous things. At times, life never treats us well, but 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 well, but still, we have no choice but to stay thankful for the ones who he have done. We got to be thankful. I don't know. He just wants us to be thankful. And that's what I hear him saying today. Be thankful for every situation that you're in. It's a hundred of these prayers. I'm not going to go into all of them, but uh, we got to be thankful. Prayers to thank God for Esther. Prayer. We, 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 he heard you. That's all I want you to know is that he heard you. Many things have had happened over the last few months that ought to have taken me away. So many things has happened. Hold on, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Many things have happened over the few months. So many things have happened. That ought to have taken us away. Some of us been sick. Some of us have COVID. We still here. How many people had COVID and died? I had COVID. I, got, I caught COVID. And let me tell you, I wish that on no one. No one. I wish that on no one. Okay. And I had the shot. And I'm telling you, we all had things that happened to us, but we're still here. But I am here standing in front of you with blessings and love from you. We are still here. God bless you, Elizabeth. I'm still here. I'm still here. God could have took me with COVID. You know, people were dying from COVID, but we're still here. My prayers for the incidents of yesterday and today have been given a green light. And all I want to do is to give appreciation to you, oh Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you for granting me my heart's desire, and also for my prayers that have been answered today. Thank you, Almighty Father. And again, share the broadcast, please. Share it. All you got to do is click on the share buttons. Share it. Don't come and just get it all for yourself. God bless you, Murray. Don't get it all for yourself. Share it so people can get this. Your blessings that have been frequently sh uh, showering on me and for letting me understand that my faith in you really is worth it. Thank you, God, for all, for all these things. Lord, I want to thank you for the precious gift of your son whom you have an atonement in, atonement for my sins. As I continue to offer prayers with faith, let there be an unending manifestation in Jesus' name. It's time for manifestation, y'all. It's time for us to, to begin to pray for manifestation. It's time for us to continue to pray, God, pour you anointed, pour you anointed on us, pour you anointed on us. Father God, make our prayer life stronger in the name of Jesus. Help us to wake up when you tell us to wake up. Help us to pray when we, we you tell us to pray. For all you have done for me, for all my prayers, you have answered. I just want to thank you. We just want to thank God today for all the prayers that he has answered, everything that he has done, everything that he's doing. He's looking out for us even now and stuff. Yesterday, I was, I, 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 I had a, 
I was, I had to deal with something and I kept saying, Lord, okay, how do I do this? How do I handle this? And how do I do this? And God showed me exactly what to do. The angel of the Lord spoke to me and told me exactly what to do, how to do it and when to do it. So you don't need to go to nobody but him. He will show you everything you need. I bring troubles to you. Oh Lord. I cried out loud and you answer my prayers. Every time you cry, the Lord hears you. Every time a tear drops, if anybody makes you cry, God sees that. He, he takes that, that tear, he puts it in a bottle, and trust me, he don't forget. I bring my troubles to you. All of it. Every trouble right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Any trouble, Father, that we're dealing with right now, we bring it to you. We lay it at your feet right now, God. Every situation that's bothering us, every spirit of frustration, Father God, every spirit of insecurity, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of you think that you're not beautiful enough. Thus say God. Some of you think you're not beautiful enough. There's something wrong with you. Why, why haven't I got married yet? Or why haven't I met someone yet? It's not, it has nothing to do with your looks. It has nothing to do with you. It's God. God is molding and making you. He's preparing you. And maybe God wants to spend some time with you alone before he sends you the mate. Because once he sends you a mate, your time is going to be a lot more. Up, taking care of your husband or your, you know, so that way you won't be able to have that much time with him. So while you free, take that time out to spend with him because that's what he wants. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. He wants that. He's preparing you. Dear gracious father, we come with a grateful heart to you for answering our prayers and also that our that you are willing to rectify all my gratitudes. We're, we're, we're grateful this morning. We thank him. Dear God, thank you for hearing all my prayers. Thank you for showing me your love even when I trespass. He loves you even when you make a mistake. He still loves you. He still cares for you. Thank you for protecting us. And thank you for caring for us. He cares so much about us. He loves us so much. He really does. But some of us, sometimes because things are not going the way we think it should go, we don't think that we're worthy of the things. Some of you are, are honestly, I'm just going to say what I hear. Some of you are wanting things way below, beneath your, your value. I hear God saying, come up. Start asking for things that you think is impossible. God says nothing is impossible for him. So there's some things that we're, we're asking God for. We're, we're, we're below our, 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 the benefits that God has for us. We're below. We rise above it. Get Yes, rise above it. Get up. Come up higher. Because he has blessings for you that you don't even can even imagine or think. But because we're so below, we, we're, we're, you know, we're below the, pro I'll just put it like this. We're below the poverty point when God is trying to tell you billionaire, billionaire status. You're still down here on mediocrity. And God is saying, no, he already died for everything. He already died for your poverty. He already died for sickness. What else do he, what else do you want him to do? It's up to you. It's up to you. And I'm telling you, obedience has a big, big part in this. Obedience has a big part in this. Dear God, thank you for what you have done for me for the past year. Thank you for all my prayers you have given answers to. Be thou magnified, O Lord. We magnify you this morning. Lord, it says, Father God, we thank you for always saying yes to our requests. Thank you for not forsaking us. And thank you for the gift of life. And if he says no, he has a reason for it. If he tells you no, he has a reason for telling you no. But I just wanted to say that to this morning. I, that dropped in my spirit. We need to be thankful for everything that he's doing. He is a good God. He is a wonderful God. He's a loving God. He cares so much about us. His mercy and grace is forever, ever, 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 everlasting. Doesn't matter what you've done yesterday. I'm not telling you to keep doing, doing it, though. But I'm saying what, what you've done yesterday was done yesterday. Just repent and move on. 
repent and just keep moving on. Move on. Amen. Renew your mind daily by the word. It, it has to be the word. So what is the difference between talent and spiritual gifts? The difference between spiritual gifts and natural talent is very obvious. Spiritual gifts are given only to those who are saved. Only those who are saved. While natural talents are received by those who are not saved as well. The one sim similarity is both are blessings from God. He said he reigns over the just as well as the unjust, correct? He blesses those who sin and he blesses those that don't sin. As a Christian, we receive different kinds of spiritual gifts and also talents. For example, we may have a good athletic ability to play basketball like what Michael Jordan has or act like uh, Natalie Portman or maybe sing like Michael Jackson, which are talents that God has given them. Those are talents. Do we even understand? Do we even see the talents of our children? Our children have talents. Do we watch them and see what talents they have? Because some of them are very talented and we need to put them in that place. Like my granddaughter, she can sing. And I've always saw that talent in her. But I always see my, do my, my daughter puts her in this, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, she has a very strong talent. And either that talent is going to show up now or it's going to show up later. But she can sing. She can, she can, she can, she makes up songs. She gets, she has a guitar and she plays the guitar and she's been doing this for years, years. She's 11 now, but that gift is going to come forth. It can't be shut down because it's a gift, but yet still she puts her in everything else. Soccer track, all that. And she's good at track too, but she has a gift of singing. It's there. I've seen it. It's there. And the other one has the other one. That one right there is going to the Olympics. I, I already see that. I mean, she's only three years old, and she was running track. Uh, they they had the little kids running track, and, and and she dusted them people. So I couldn't believe it. I I was looking like shaking my head. Oh my God, she can run a, around the whole. Thank you, thank you, Crystal, for sharing. Thank you so much. She can run around a, a, a three mile uh, track and never stop running. So I already that gift is imparted in her. My daughter was also a gifted in running. So the gift is there. We need to realize what our gift, what is your talent? What is your gift? Sometimes when we have extraordinary wisdom that we impart to other people about God, and sometimes we have good leadership in the church. Bridget has that wisdom. She has it to impart on other people, which are spiritual gifts God has given to us after receiving his salvation. But what is the difference between a talent and a spiritual gift? It sounds very much alike, but actually they are very different. They're different. Let us compare both blessings because both are blessings. They're blessings from God and contracts to see the difference between natural talent, natural talent and spiritual gifts. We shall look into the Bible reading to define what spiritual gift is to further support the comprehension. We want we want scriptures to back it up because we want to know. We we need to know the difference because we you know I'm I'm gifted in this. I'm gifted in that. But you also have talents that you're not using to make yourself productive in the church. What talents has God given you to help and the build a church? Yes, and she's a spiritual midwife. And I'm gonna tell you, there's a lot of people that don't understand spiritual midwives because there were times I'm in the church one time and I knew I was giving birth. I knew I was giving birth and the girl coming over there to my cats and out a demon. If you don't get away from me, if you don't touch, don't put your, don't touch me. I, I started pleading the blood of Jesus out loud. They don't know. People don't know the difference. I was literally giving birth. And I'm telling you, spiritual birth feels like natural birth. Really not as intense, but you feel like your back be hurting, your stomach be hurting. It, it just, just, uh, 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 Bridget, let me know if I'm if I'm if I'm explaining correctly because it feels like you're really giving birth, but it's spiritual. She's coming over there talking about the, the, that blood of Jesus. The girl, if you don't get away from me with that blood of Jesus stuff, they don't know the difference. They don't know the difference. Yes, singing in a talent, not a gift. Exactly. Yes, singing is not a talent. 
It said, is, it is a talent, not a gift. Yes, it is. It's a talent. It's not a gift. And then two, when they become saved, then it, then it, 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 to me, when, when, when people are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and they sing, you can actually feel the anointing coming from them. You can feel the anointing coming from them. This means that a person in, uh, inherits a talent from their mother or father, therefore having a genetic component. So yeah, my granddaughter has a talent. She has a talent, both of them. One can run, one can 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 sing. The other two, they're very gifted. Very, I mean, I give them very talented in soccer. When I say talented, both of them are going to get a scholarship. It's 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 a, it's a very powerful talent that they have. This means that a person inherits a talent from their mother or father before having a genetic component. For example, a man inherits his father's talent in mathematics, and that is why he also becomes a good mathematician. Another example is when a woman inherits her, her mother's singing voice, and that is why she is a, a good, good at singing. These are natural talents that are passed down from generation to generation in the family. Now, in my family... And my family in Brazil, all my um, all my uncles, I have uncles and aunties that are powerful in Jesus. Powerful, powerful. My grandmother was very awesome. My grandmother was a she was full blooded Indian, and they say I look just like her. I I I remember her, you know, I remember her a little bit. I know I remember her hair was down past her butt, but she was Indian, complete, fully a full, full blooded Indian, and she loved God. And when she passed, she passed in her sleep. She passed in her sleep. Beautiful woman, a beautiful woman. Spiritual gifts, on the other hand, are received by a person once they have received salvation. It is given from the hands of the Holy Spirit according to the will of the Father. We are reminded by this in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and 11. And I'm going to go there because we need to understand the difference. We need to understand the difference. And some of us are using our talent to do whatever we want to do. And we're not using our talents to do what God wants us to do. And this is why some things are not working. Because what are you using a talent for? It says, yes, it is real birth and process. It is not in the right atmosphere. And with a true midwife, there will be complications and turn into a miscarriage. I'm trying to tell you, the girl kept coming over there talk about some of the name of Jesus. And I said, the blood of Jesus. Got back up off me with that one. I knew what was going on. I knew what was happening to me. And I didn't, really didn't need her assistance, to be honest with you. I didn't need her assistance. Because God knew exactly what I needed and what I needed to do. I didn't need her assistance. But, you know, some people like to be seen. They, they like to show themselves. So, you know, they want to act like they're doing something. And I said, Lord, I said, in the name of Jesus. You don't, you don't know the difference between giving birth and a spirit. That's a problem already. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and 11. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with, with a, without. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. And to another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. But all these works that one and the self same spirit divide into every man severely as he will we don't we can't use the gifts we, it's, it's like it's as he will if if he wants you to be used in healing then he's going to do that because why because he's in you he's in you so if he wants you to be used in that area he's going to use you even though you may not have that gift but if god if you're willing to be used in that area he'll use you he will use you. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each of oh, to prophet. Oh, here's the scripture right here. But to prophet 
a spirit is to given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom the, um, through the spirit through through the spirit through the through the spirit. So not by our own means, but through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit, and to another, gift of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits, and to another, different kind of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things. Distributing to each one individual as he wills. As he wills. So if he wills to do it, he's going to do it. We can't force nothing. A lot of times we're trying to force things. And that's why things ain't happening. Because we're trying to force God's hands to do certain things. We're forcing things and we should just let it happen. If it's going to be, it's going to be. Whatever God has for you is for you. Spiritual gifts are acquired by only the saved, while talents are acquired by both the saved and unsaved. The second difference of spiritual gifts and the natural talent is that natural talents are acquired by both the saved and the unsaved, while spiritual talents are acquired only by those who receive salvation. So spiritual talents are only acquired by those who receive salvation. Anyone with a family that has a talent for something can acquire such talent. On the other hand, the Spirit of God is the only source for spiritual gifts, and without accepting Jesus Christ and true salvation, a person cannot receive spiritual gifts. We are reminded by this in Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, 10 and 12. And we're going to go there. Because we need to know the difference. Some of us are not even using our talents. You got so much talent that you can just, I mean, books, you got so many books in you and the enemy's telling you, yeah, ain't nothing going to happen with you, you know, because he's a liar. He'll talk. He'll start telling you that nothing is going to happen. You're just wasting your time, but he's wasting his breath. How about that part? Get away from me, Satan. So Ephesians 4, 10, 11 and 12 says, he who descended is himself also he who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service. So we pastors, prophetesses and whatever we are we supposed to be whatever we call ourselves, we are to serve. The position name don't matter. We are servants of the Lord. We are to equip the saints so they can be effective in the work that they do. To build up of the body of Christ. We're to build. I'm only here building you and, and, and this, and, and this um, calling that he has for me. I'm just here to build you. And again, I never, ever, I could never, if I'd have known that I was going to be in, up in this, I mean, in this situation, I probably would have ran, but I'm building. We always got to remember that we are servants. We are no, we are nothing but servants. And once you start getting a head, big head thinking that you, as you doing all of this stuff, all of that's going to end. Spiritual gifts are follows. Wisdom of the word, knowledge of the word, gifts of healing. Gift of healing. Performing miracles, speaking, and the interpretation of tongues, apostleship, evangelism, and pastoral care. These are just some of the spiritual gifts that a person can receive once they follow Christ. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, as we read this, Father, begin to reveal your spiritual gifts to your children to your sons and daughters, begin to reveal to them their gift. And also, Father, begin to reveal to them their talent. The talent that you gave them, the talent that you gave them that can lead them to receive millions of dollars. Father, I pray that you stir it up right now, that these talents will be exposed and be revealed to them. Father, put that talent, let that talent just Come out of their belly, Father. Let it just manifest the talent that you have given them, the talent that you have put in them. Let it come forth this day. And Father, show us our gift, our spiritual gifts 
that is needed for the body of Christ, for the edifying of the body, for the building of the body in Jesus' name. Show us today, oh God. Everything that's been lying dormant that we have not realized is there, Father. I pray that you begin to reveal it to us. Help us to tap into those things that you already have put inside of us. So if we're broke and we're not blessed, it's because we have not tapped into our talent. Spiritual gifts are matured and super and su, su, and su, surprising, su, surprisingly, or while talents are developed and expected. You have to develop your talent. Like I have, my talent is being creative. Like with the shirt, I'm very creative. And, I'm, and, and God has always given me different things to create on the shirts, which today I will get on y'all shirts. I know out today, the Lord, the Lord told me yesterday, look, it's time for you to, it's time for delivering some of the shirts. I said, okay, Lord, I got you. I have to go get a weight and stuff so I can wait, get the packages so I can start sending it out. But we have to understand that spiritual gifts are matured and surprising. The talents are developed. So develop your, your skill. Now, I've been doing my T-shirts um, for two years now, two years. And sometimes I sell, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I work on them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I, I just put them down. But I'm coming into a season I know now that it has to be put out. So God has been giving me what to do and how to do it. And I'm going to, I'm working on that right now, but I'm still working on it. Like he's still developing it. Like I, I'm learning more, like I'm hearing things and, 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 and he put things in my mind and I'm able to, to, to make the shirts, you know, create, create it, make it very creative. But one thing he did give me when he gave me the, the, the talent to do the, the shirts, he told me he wanted his word to be on the shirt. Anything that represents him, anything that's going to edify him is what he wanted on the shirt. And sometimes my grandson said, well, that's not, they are church shirts. Yeah, but that's what God gave me. I have to follow what he gave me. Just because I don't see the prosperity from it yet doesn't mean it's not going to come. That's what he told me to do. And I'm being developed in it, and I'm going to stick with it until he manifests the blessings behind it. And this is what we got to do when we get a talent. Wisdom. You could, Bridget can write a book of wisdom. She can actually write a small, it don't even have to be a, a, a big book. I, I have a uh, uh, devotional book that I wrote that God keeps telling me, get finished, finish, finish. But you know, some, every time it's something, something, something happened, I can't get to it. But I'm eventually going to have to finish it. And I'm not too far away from finishing it. Another difference between a spiritual gift and a natural talent is the natural talent can be developed with continuous practices while a spiritual gift cannot and is given with a surprise. Let me read that again. Another difference between a spiritual gift and a natural talent is that the natural talent can be developed with continuous practice while a spiritual gift cannot and is given with a surprise. Spiritual gifts are always unexpected, and when a person receives it, they are already good at it right away, even if they have not trained for it. So, Sandra, you need to come forth because you have that evangelism on you, and you don't want to speak in front of people, but you're going to come to a point where you can't hold it anymore because it's going to bust out of you. And you don't need to worry about your speech or how it's going to sound or how it's going to come out. You guys know I'm from Brazil. You guys know English is really my second language, not my first language. And I'm telling you, sometimes I have really a rough time with words. Uh-oh. So we have to understand that God blesses us and we need to use the blessing he's given us. Even talents came from him. I, I, I had to. Who else would it came from? Always, spiritual gifts are always unexpected and you are good at it. You're good at it. 
God will give you the words to say, yes, it's time for her to come forth. I, I mean, I'm just going to say it. it's time for her to come forth. 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 I don't know if you've even spoken at your church yet, but I know that you're supposed to be already starting speaking from time to time. You're supposed to be given some type of arena. So, and I see you in front of a podium, like just a stand up podium. It's not a real big one, but it's like square and you stand in there and you are speaking. I see you clear as day. It's going to happen. You can't run from it. You can't, because it's, it's it's so much. It's, it's gonna but it's gonna burst out of your belly. It says, and this is wait before I get into this. This is why you got church people sitting in the church daily, and they just getting fat, 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 fat. Have y'all ever seen a big fat, 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 fat pig? Uh, one of them fat pigs, two, three, five thousand pounds. They getting fat, 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 and not nothing is coming out. Nothing's coming out. When a person receives it, they are already good at uh, already good at already good at it right away, even if they have not trained for it. That is how powerful the Holy Spirit is in giving spiritual gifts. <clears throat> the spiritual gifts, I'm sorry, the spiritual gifts, spiritual blessings to the one who is mature enough to receive it. Ephesians four fourteen and sixteen says, as a result. We are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful shimming, but speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by that which every joint supplying according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Because the spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit, it is understood that it is used for the common good and for the work of the church. It's for the work of the church. The gifts that are given is not for you. It's for the work of the church. God may use that gift to, to bless you, you may use that gift to make you famous, to make you whatever you want to call it. But it's it's not you. It's always him. He is the one and only one that can cause that to happen. Because spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit, it's understood, again, that it is used for the common good and for the work of the church. On the other hand, natural talents can be used for personal achievements alone and not solely for the church of Christ. Both spiritual gifts and talents come from God. Both spiritual gifts and natural talents are God giving. This means that these are blessings that our God, Lord God, Lord God has imparted in us. God is our creator, and it is through Him that we receive different abilities. We are reminded by this in Nehemiah 9 and 6. You alone are the Lord. You have made the heavens and the heaven of heavens with all their host. The earth and all that is on it, everything that's on this earth, everything. The seas and all that is in them. You give life to all of them and the heavenly host bows down before you. And Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Because everything that we have is from God. Everything that you have is from God. Your children, everything you do have is from God. We should exalt him and not lean on our own understanding, rather to him. Romans 12, 3 and 8 states that, For though the grace given to me, I say to every man among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think. You know, you ever heard people just brag about, I'm, I, 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 when I start hearing that, y'all, I, 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 that really just bothers me because it's now, it's not God, it's you. You, 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 you doing everything. God ain't doing nothing. It's just you. 
but you can't even get up in the morning and, and, and walk if God didn't let you walk. For though the grace is given to me, I say to every man among you, do not think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. And since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let each exercise them accordingly. Exercising them accordingly. To the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberty, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. What does this mean? The difference between spiritual gifts and natural talents is very obvious. Spiritual gifts are received, are given only to those who are saved and are given in surprise and maturity. As you mature, you're going to find yourself having gifts that you, God just bust them out on you. And it is used solely for the command of the church. While natural talents are inherited. God bless you, Sean. Are inherited. I'm sorry I didn't get back to you yesterday, but I'll get back to you today. I'll be so busy. I'm sorry. Um, while natural talents are inherited, can be received by those who are not saved as well and can be used even for selfish and personal gains. Nevertheless, despite the major differences, there is one similarity between the two. And that is the fact that both are blessings from God, the creator of all things. So now we understand the difference between talent and gifting. Talents are uh, not a gift. It's a talent that you have to develop. But they both came from God. But the talent is something that you can do that can actually, uh, you know, make you money. And all of us have that. So we need to tap in into those talents so we can do what we need to do. And spiritual gifts are gifts that comes as you mature with God. As you mature, he begins to give you more gifts and more insight and more stuff as you begin to mature. So at each level, as you mature, he starts putting gifts in you, different, different spiritual gifts, whatever it is. So God is good. God is good. And we got to get back to discernment, discernment, witchcraft, prophetic witchcraft, because it's still happening and we need to understand. And I know I, I've been laid back a little bit, but, you know, I had to go and do what I need to do. But we're going to get back to this book today because we need to talk about it. But I hope that helped in somebody about the talents. Everything should be used to the, yes, it should. Everything needs to be used for the glory of God. And if you're not doing it for the glory of God, then why are you doing it? If you're not doing it for the glory of God, then why even bothered? I say, why even bothered? If you're not using it for God, you know, we, we need to do everything for God and everything that's not being done for God. It should, it should just be left alone. I don't, I don't see the purpose. Hallelujah. So we're on uh, discerning prophetic. Uh, I don't even know what I was about to say. Prophetic. Um, uh, you guys, you know what I'm trying to say. Just met, left, left my mind real quick. Discerning. Uh, we're on false, false prophets versus false prophecy. Chapter four. We talked about. I'm going to just go back a little bit just so I, I, we can um, kind of catch up on those that are not that haven't been on here. But we were we've been talking about uh, different things about prophetic words, how we do, how to recognize a false prophet, how to understand when it's a false prophecy, when it's not a false prophecy. We've been talking about all these different things that God has 
been giving us the ability to learn, including me, because we all need to know. Two prophecy, two prophecy, chapter one, we talked about two prof prophecy in the first 20th century, 21st century. Because they've been prophesying this land since the, the day of the Old Testament. Discerning prophetic witchcraft. Sorry, you guys. I had a mind. My mind just slipped. I got discerning prophetic witchcraft. Because one thing about witchcraft, and I know because I came out of that, it's very dangerous to open up the door to that. Because it's very hard to come out of it. You, you really going to be fighting to come out of that because once you start dibbling and dabbling in that and, you know, the enemy does not want to let you go. Chapter two, what a real prophet looks like. We talked about what, what a real prophet looks like. Foundation of modern day prophet. We talked about that. I'm just kind of just going just to the chapters just to kind of like give you guys an out. Okay, chapter three, signs of a false prophet. They're, they were back then. They're still here today. Signs of a false prophet. We talked about that. You can always go back to my teachings. It's on um, It's on my page. You can always go back to the teachings. It's on uh, God's Words, uh, Deliverance International Ministry. I put all my tapes there. So if you want to go back and listen to them, you can. Also, Real Talk. God bless you, Pastor Sharon. You can go to Real Talk. Real Talk has all the messages that I've done since January. Um, all of my tapes are there. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting them all transferred to YouTube. I'm working. Somebody's doing that, working on that for me right now. False prophecies versus false prophets versus false prophecy. Can false prophets release true prof prophecy? Can true prophets release false prophecy? There are important distinguishes and prophetic di um, dimensions. Many are confused because they judge the prophet based on the message alone rather than the spirit behind the words. We have to get discernment to understand the difference. When someone prophesies to me, I am not listening as closely to the words coming out of their mouth. I can record the words and review it later. When someone prophesies to me, rather I am discerning the spirit behind the words. You got to discern the spirit. Behind the words. That's because, yes, a false prophet can release a true prophecy. And yes, a true prophet can release a false prophecy. And this is that if the prophecy is not true, it is false. But I don't want a word from an accurate diver. diver. Here's a key to understand what is happening behind the scene of these prophetic operations. When false prophets release a true prophecy, the source wasn't God, but a spirit of divination. And I've been talking about this for a long time, about the spirit of divination. The spirit of divination, what it does is, I even send you guys a video of it. What it does is, okay, say I'm preaching, I'm standing up, and the spirit of divination comes. And the, the, it's basically a monitoring spirit. The spirit of divination is connected to a monitoring spirit, which monitors your life, which listens. Like, say, say I'm reading something. Say I write something down right now. I, I'll write something. I'll say something like, today is hot. Or I could say, uh, oh, um, let me, how can I put this, Lord? Say, I the, the enemy's been monitoring me, okay? He's sending a monitoring, a familiar spirit to monitor me. And he knows that I'm going through something and I need finances. I need, I need money. God, you know, these bills are due. You know, I can't cover them. Father, I need my bills paid. I need my bills paid. And you know, if I don't pay this, they're going to turn it off. That kind of stuff. They're listening to you. They're watching you. They're watching. You. Let me tell you something. They're even watching your mannerism. They're even watching your mannerism. They're watching your, your behavior. Even if you don't speak, they're watching your behavior. And when they're doing that, they can tell what's going on. So what they does, here I am preaching to the congregation and I'm standing here and here comes the, the devil. To, to the, uh, Let me call sister Susie or, 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 or John Doe. Let me call, hey, John Doe. I hear God saying that uh, he's uh, God's going to bless you financially because you need bills paid or uh, 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 you've been struggling in the financial area, but God's going to bless you. That spirit is telling that person 
what to say. Spirit of divination, monitoring spirits. This is why we need discernment to be able to discern the difference between a false prophet and a true prophet. When a true prophet releases a false prophecy, or as some put it, a poor prophecy, they are not typically tapping into divination. They're not. They just made a mistake. They missed it. Prophecy is fallible. The word of God never fails and is in, in erudent. See Matthew 24 and 35. It says, and we'll talk more about how true prophets miss it later in this chapter. Because you can miss it. Even as a true prophet, you can miss it. Okay? I've seen it. Recently, somebody missed it. Missed it. And I was like, okay, I'm not judging him. I can miss it too. Uh, Matthew 30, uh, 24 and 35. I want to read the scripture because we need to know. Okay, 35 says... I don't know why people keep calling me right now. Satan, not today. Uh, 35, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Okay? So all these gifts and talents can pass away, but his words, the word of the God will never, ever pass away. And that's Matthew 24 and 35. Prophecy is followable because prophets are followable. Anyone who missed it in the Old Testament, if a prophet uttered a prophecy that didn't turn out to be true, he was deemed a false prophet. Thankfully, that is not so in the New Testament. Thank God we don't have to worry about getting stoned if we missed it. Because back then, if you prophesied and it didn't happen, they were going to kill you. You were going to get stoned. They were going to stone you. You were going to literally get stoned and die. Again, prophecy prophecy is fallible. Even the most mature Christian who are rooted and grounded in love of Christ and the word of God can and do offer prophetic utterances that are less than 100% accurate. And I'm telling you, it's true. I'm not going to mention names or nothing, but that happened. And I seen it and I was there and I was watching and I was like, oh, but you know, it's okay. As believers, we must learn to judge prophetic words, which well dive into more in later chapter. The Bible makes a case for the reality, reality that prophecy can be flawed or downright false. And sometimes you want something so bad, you want something so bad, you'd be like, you want something so bad. Now, I'm telling you, we could want something so bad. And, and the enemy be like, okay, I'm gonna give you what you want. Especially women, after you, excuse me, y'all, excuse me for a second. Uh, especially women, especially if you if you came out of a bad relationship or you just been broken up with your boyfriend or whatever, and and and, and you you vulnerable and you hurt and this and this and that, and then here comes a uh, 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 Billy D, you know, here comes Billy D or Michael Jordan or whoever, Billy D, here he come, stroking or stroking. And he looking all good and stuff. And you just vulnerable. You just broke up with somebody. And here he is trying to. He, Cause see the devil know what to send you. He gonna send you what you like. He gonna he knows what you like. He knows what you what you're going through. So he gonna send you everything you like. So here come Billy D telling you everything you want to know. Everything. And all of a sudden you want it so bad that you manifest this this Billy D from hell. Here he comes. Because that's what you desire. So we got to be careful with that too. Because you can desire something so bad that, 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 that it can draw that, that enemy to you. Paul wrote, let two or three a prophet speak and let the... Oh my goodness. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. 1 Corinthians 14.29. 14.29. I'm just going to read this last scripture and then I'm going to keep going so for the sake of the time. Um, Corinthians 2 and 15. 1 Corinthians 2 and 15. Because we got to know. If you don't know what you're dealing with, he'll send you a counterfeit. 
And some people be falling for that counterfeit, for real, for real. That counterfeit be, be, be saying everything, manipulation. They use manipulation to get try to manipulate you. They'll say everything you want to hear. And it's the devil himself. I've been, I've been, I've been part of that. Okay. I've been through that. False counterfeits. I've been through that. I've been through that foolishness. And I'm gonna tell you, I I, I I recognize it. And now I take my time. I don't rush into things. I take my time. I watch you for a minute. And I see what you're working with. And that's why I don't understand people get married within six months and oh God, we we, we met and God sent us and we just married. You don't know a person. You don't know a person unless you're with that person for at least a year to two years. And even then, you don't know them. And I don't, I'm, I'm just gonna say it. We always want to blame God. God sent him. God sent him. Yeah, God sent him. We're going to see how long he's going to be around because God sent him. You better make sure God sent him and not the devil sent him. Because I'm telling you, people do that. It happens. We thank God that I baptized none of you. Is this the right scripture? 1 Corinthians 14, 29. Oh, no, that's not 14, 29. I'm sorry. It says that no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh of glory in his presence. And again, he, he, he who is spiritual judges all things. First Corinthians 2 and 15. That says, least any should say that I have baptized you in my own name. 215, 1 Corinthians 215. Okay, wrong scripture, sorry. Um, 215 says, but he that is spiritual judges all things. All things, yet he himself is judge of no man. He, but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet himself is judge of no man. It says, no, I'm going to go to 16 also. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. So for sake of the time, I'm going to go ahead and continue. John wrote, beloved, do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. First John 4 and 1. Just because somebody can read the word and somebody knows the word don't mean that they're from God. Because the devil knows the word. You think them demons don't know the word? They might know the word better than you. They know the word. But they flip the word, they switch the word around, they put the word in their own context. And yet, because you don't have no discernment and you don't go to God for yourself and you go and read the Bible and ask God about it, you're falling for it. Well, I ain't that, I'm not that slow anymore. Okay. Maybe back in the day, but now I'm going to go to God and ask Him what's really going on. And I ask God for a seer's eyes and more discernment daily. If it were impossible, if it were impossible for one who is truly gifted by the Holy Spirit to release an, uh, an inaccurate prophecy, Paul and John would not have extorted us to judge prophetic words. There would be no need to judge the, prophet, the prophecy. We could just accept it as truth. We must be careful then not only to judge what we receive or hear in public settings, through the mouths of others, but also to be responsible enough to judge what we hear in our own hearts. Your own heart can start speaking to you about stuff that's not even supposed to, it's not right. The Bible says that the heart is deceitfully above all things and desperately wicked. Our heart is desperately wicked. Like I said, you could desire something so bad that you want it and you you will manifest some mess, some demonic stuff be popping up and you think it's God because you, you desire that. And you know, a lot of pregnant women, I'm going to just say this, a lot of pregnant women, because I just dropped in my spirit, they want, I want a boy, 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 I'm going to get a boy and then next time you have a girl and then you, you, you're, you're upset because you had a girl. Because your heart wanted something that God didn't want for you. God gave you what he thought was good for you. And that was a girl. But we speak negative things on our own selves and our own children even before they're born. Because that's what we want. But we never ask God, what do you want me to have? What do you want, Father? What is it that you want me to have? 
and be thankful for, for when it comes. Okay? Because I'm telling you, God is a good God. It says, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, number 10, and I tried the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. 11, as the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatch, hatcheth not th uh, them not, so he that giveth riches and not the by right shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. We can't go around here listening to everything and not asking God to help us. We got to ask God to help us. We got to ask God to help us get discernment. I'm telling you, we need discernment. We need discernment badly. Consider this. <clears throat> Consider this. Uh, Wayne Graldem. I'm reading from the book. Discerning uh, Prophetic Witchcraft by. Uh, oh, God. I don't know. I forgot her name right now. Jennifer McClare. Jennifer McClare. Says prophecy in ordinary New Testament churches was not equal to scriptures in authority, but was simply very human and sometimes particularly mistaken report of something the Holy Spirit brought to one's someone's mind. Mike Bickley, director of the International House of Prayer, Kansas City, explains that the spirit convoys to our mind thoughts. We communication, we communicate in contrary language. There are a mixture of God's words and man's words that combine divine inspiration and with the human process. Some prophetic words may be 10% God's word and 90% man's word, while others have a greater revelatory content. Most prophecy has a strong mixture of man's ideas. While many words are extraordinarily accurate, then we must make room for the pos uh, possibility that someone's own thoughts, experiences, biases, and emotions can influence their prophetic utterances. With that administration, we must carefully weed through prophetic words, especially those that could impact people profoundly for better or worse for traces of our human influences. The Agabus prophecy. Prophecy is filtered through the human soul with all its emotions. Agabus. It's called Agabus. A-G-A-B-U-S. Prophecy. Reasoning and int intellect, we might say there is an art and a science to prophecy. Intimacy with God and prayer is the art while speaking forth the ideas God reveals to our hearts is a science. And it is an imperfect science because we are imperfect people. We're imperfect. What New Testament scripture proves the point that prophecy can't ordinate from the Holy Spirit, but be clouded by man's filter. The Agabus prophecy in Acts 21, Paul was on his way to Jerusalem when a prophet named Agabus, mind you, the Bible calls him a prophet, offered Paul a warning. Let's listen in. And as we stayed away, I mean, as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judah. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet and said, thus says the Holy Spirit. So shall the Jews and Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. This is the prophecy he gave him, Acts 2, 21, 10 and 11. That was the prophecy, but what actually happened when we looked at the account in the scriptures, we find it turned out to be out a little differently than Agabus prophesied. Paul was indeed arrested in Jerusalem, but not by the Jews. Let's read on. He was arrested. But you see the prophecy he gave? The prophecy he gave was a little bit different than what happened. So this is why it's important that we 
really listen, listen, listen. I, I, I've, I've, I know it's not me. It's never me. But God has given me that ability to listen, to hear, just to hear and know, you know, if it's him, if it's not him, if it's uh, the devil, if, you know, if it's not right, if it doesn't make sense to me, it just don't make sense to me. I'll be like, it don't make sense. And if it don't make sense, then I need, you need to make sense, make it make sense for me. Just because you want to make me believe what you're saying, you got to make it make sense for me. And you could get mad because people get mad when you be like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't receive that. But that's what God said. It. That's what the words know. You can, you make it make sense. And then maybe I'll believe what you're saying. Okay. And I tell, there's people I've had that conversation with make, make sense. And until then I'm going to go to God and let him make sense for me. <laughs> then Paul took the man. This is what the prophecy, I'm going to read the other prophecy real quick. Again, one more time. And, and as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judah when he had come to us. He took Paul's belt, took his belt off of him, bound to his own hands and feet and said, thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt. You know, binding means to hold and deliver him to into the hands of the Gentiles. That's Acts 21, 10, and 11. So let's see what he really meant. Because the prophecy was a little bit different than it, than it came out to be. Then Paul took the man, and the next day, having been purified with them, entered the temple to announce the expiration of the days of purification, at which time an offering should be made for each one of them. When now, when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowded and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people, the law, and this place. And furthermore, he also brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled his this holy place. For they had previously seen, deliver the mail and let God confirm the word. Exactly. For the, uh, Cassandra, the main, uh, mailman never wait to see if the mail is received. Exactly. For they had previously seen, is a it says Trump, 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 Humphreys, and he, the Ephesian with him in the city, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was disturbed, and the people ran together, seized Paul, and dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. Now, as they were seeking to kill him, news came to the commander of the uh, garrison that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately took soldiers and uh, uh, centurions and ran down to them. And when he, they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. They, they was beating him. Beating him for, for, you know, saying that he was, he was preaching and trying to bring healing and deliverance and they didn't like it. Then the commander came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains. And he asked who he was and what he had done. And some among the multitude cried, one thing and some another. Acts 21, 26, 26 to 34. And that says, then Paul took the man and uh, Paul took the man and the next day purified himself with them and entered, entered into, into the temple of uh, sanctification and accomplishment uh, accomplishment of the days of purification until they and offering should be offered for every one of them. And then when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews, which were of a Asia went and saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out men of Israel, help this man that, you know, we just read that saying that he was there teaching and blah, blah, blah. And, and stuff, uh, you know, don't, is, that's the accusing of the brother. Don't the devil does that to us. He accuses us. He comes and accuses us of things we're doing for God because he's the accuser of the brother. She ain't saved. She did. She that. Da, 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 da. And, and, and just accuse the accuser. The accuser. 
Now let's explore how Agabus or originally prophecy compared to what actually happened in Paul in Jerusalem. Whom did Agabus prophesy would bind in Paul in Jerusalem? Who arrested Paul in Jerusalem? What part did the Jews play in this in Paul's arrest? What do we typically call what Agabus did when he bounded his own hands and feet as he released the prophetic word? As you can see in the considering the answers to those questions, Agabus prophesied was not 100% accurate. Agabus said the Holy Spirit told him that the Jews in Jerusalem would bind the man who owned the belt that he would bind himself with. But that's not what happened it's clear that the Holy Spirit didn't speak these exact words to Agabus. The Holy Spirit is never wrong. So if the Holy Spirit actually told Agabus that the Jews would bind Paul, then it would have happened the way, that way. He don't miss. Holy Spirit don't miss. That said that, that said the general word that Agabus gave us accurate. The bottom line was that Paul was arrested in Jerusalem just by the Romans instead by the Jews. And the Jews played a key role in the arrest by creating such a stir as seeing Paul in the temple, the Roman soldiers had to respond. And so they did. Now, Agabus was known as an accurate prophet. You could be accurate, but you could still miss it. This uh, Agabus is the same Agabus we found in Acts eleven twenty eight, prophesying a famine in the land, which also happened in the days of Clo Claudius Caesar. Agabus was not a false prophet, but as a New Testament prophet, he is not functioning in the same role as an Old Testament prophet. And neither are we as prophets or prophet prophetic people. So he missed it somewhere because the Holy Spirit didn't, he, he claimed one thing, but the Holy Spirit said something else. So somewhere he missed it. Okay, so um, 11, um, the scripture, Acts 11, 20, 11, 28 says, And there stood up one of them's name, Agabus, and signified by the Holy Spirit that there should be great dread throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius the Caesar. So he did prophesy and it happened. Indeed, um, Nathaniel flat out missed it. Nathaniel flat out missed it. God says Nathaniel flat out missed it. Indeed, even in the Old Testament times, we see God's grace and prophetic ministry. I am reminded of the time David was dwelling in his house, meditating upon the Lord. God had given him rest from all his enemies. David was talking with the prophet Nathaniel, Nathan, the same prophet who later would rebuke him for committing adultery with Bathsheba. And setting up the murder of her husband, Ura, the Hittite. See 2 Samuel 12. David was dismayed because God was dwelling inside, uh, inside tent curtains while he lived in a house of Caesar. 2 Samuel 2, 7 and 2. That's when Nathaniel spoke these words from his anointed mouth. Go do all that is in your heart for the Lord is with you. Second Samuel 7 and 3. We all know the consequences of what David did. David wanted that man's wife. We have the same thing happening here on earth. That man, he wanted that man's wife. He wanted her. He watched her. He watched her bathe and all that kind of stuff. He wanted her. So he planned. He made a plot and a plan. To kill her husband. <clears throat> so we know what he did. He sent him out in front. They went to go fight. He sent him out in front so he could be killed. So he can have his wife. But we also know the consequences of what happened when he did that. Because when he did that, when he, he, he did get the wife, but he also lost his child. Because the baby that he had with her was taken from him. So there's consequences to adultery, fornication. There's consequences to everything we do. So for those that are out here fornicating and, 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 and you got a wife and then you got a, a mistress and, and, and you're doing these kind of things, there are going to be consequences that's going to come behind it. There's going to be hell to pay. 
I'm going to say it just like I hear it. It's going to be hell to pay. It's going to be hell to pay. Oh, God's going to forgive you. Oh, he's going to forgive you. But there are going to be some consequences behind that action. He said, go do all that is in your heart for the Lord is with you. 2 Samuel 73. Which says that the king said, this is um, 2 Samuel 7 and 2 and 3. It says that the king said unto Nathan, the prophet, see now I dwell in the house of Cider. But the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathaniel said to the, to the king, go do all that is in thy heart for the Lord is with thee. God told him to go. God was with him. Although this wasn't a thus said the Lord type of prophetic word, it was a word of approval from a trusted prophetic voice in David's life. David was looking for a prophetic counsel about his plans to build a house for the Lord, seeking confirmation that it was in God's will. David seemed to receive that confirmation, but the Lord took steps to correct Nathan's pure hearted mistake before the king got too far. God sent Nathan back to David with a bona fide prophetic word that contradicted his friendly counsel to do. So some of us don't want to hurt people's feelings because they're our friends. Because that's what happened here. Nathan was his confidant. He would go to him to tell him things. And what happened here was, is that he went and was prophesying to him, but he was basically prophesying out of his little friendly heart. Okay? Some of us go to people and say, hey, what do you think about this? You know, you know, especially when you're a prophet, people will come to you and try to They'll talk to you and say things to you because they want you to, to kind of like tell them stuff. So they'll come to you and they'll be like, well, what do you think about this? And this is that. And then all of a sudden you start spilling out what you think out of your soul, out of your heart, instead of what God is saying. Oh, I've been there, done that. So I know it's true. It was a word of approval from a trusted prophetic voice in David's life. And David was looking for prophetic counsel about his plan to build a house for the Lord, seeking confirmation that was in God's will. God seemed to receive that confirmation, but the Lord took steps to correct Nathan's pure hearted mistake before, before David started doing what Nathan told him. So God sent Nathan back to David with a bona fide prophetic word that contradicted his friendly counsel to do all that is in your heart for the Lord is with you. The Lord did not want David to build him a house, but rather committed to establishing David's throne forever. 2 Samuel 7, 4 through 17. 4 through 17. What did Nathan do? He went back to David and corrected himself. Imagine if he didn't. Imagine if he didn't tell this man the truth. There are two lessons we can learn from this incident. First, if you flow in the prophetic ministry, you have to be careful not to accidentally lead people astray by sharing your opinion without a disclaimer. And sometimes even with a disclaimer, if you are a believer who hangs around with prophets, be careful to discern if they are speaking for the Lord or from their own opinions, their own soulish hearts. Ask them if you are, are unsure. If somebody gives you a word, I tell you all the time, when I give you guys a word, if you feel like it's not from God, come contact me because honestly, I'm a, I'm pretty accurate. I'm a pretty accurate prophetess. But if you still don't feel right about it, you call me, we got, we go, we're going to figure it out. Don't just receive everything. Oh yes. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we do that. we be in a prophetic, prophetic session and everything we say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we come out and we come in agreement with everything. Even if it ain't even what you don't do that. Don't come in agreement with something that you don't feel is, is in your spirit to, to agree with. Don't do that. 
I tell people all the time, I'm not coming into an agreement with nothing. If it ain't a God, I'm, it's not a God. And I am not coming into an agreement. So, okay, I'm not going to do it. Why should I? You know what I'm saying? Why, why, why do that? Why? Don't do it. Don't come into an agreement with something that you, I don't care what's setting you in. Listen, if you can't get to the person right away, write down a little note for yourself and say, uh-uh, I need to go back and check with this. Go back to whoever's in charge or whatever place you at. Uh, if, if it's on Facebook or whatever, send them a message and say, I need clarity on this. Don't go running around here like a chicken with their head cut off. You know, if you ever seen a chicken with a head cut off, I did because I used to live in a farm. My grandfather, my mother's dad and my grandmother, we used to live in a farm in Brazil and we had all kinds of, I remember we had, uh, we had watermelons growing. We had mangoes on trees and um, we used to catch pigeons and stuff like that. Just, we didn't eat them or nothing. We just caught, caught them. I don't know why we wanted to do that, but we did. Me and my brother used to catch them. And I remember my dad, my grandfather um, killing a, a chicken so we could have dinner. And when he cut the chicken's head off, the chicken would just be running like crazy, just be all over the place. And that's what some of us are doing. Running around here with our head cut off. Because we don't ask. We don't ask. Oh, I'm going to ask. You ain't just going to speak everything over me. How did Nathaniel miss it? Did he even hear from the Lord to begin with? Was he offering his wisdom instead of the wisdom of the Lord? Was he trying to appease David in his heart's desire? Or did he do it for po political or friendship reasons? We don't know. It could have been one of these reasons or more than one of these reasons. All of these are pitfalls and prophetic ministry. Does the Holy Spirit always speak expressively or not? All of the dramatic prophetic encounters you hear or read about, such as the audible voice of the Lord or angels appearing, most prophecy comes to believers in a subtler way. Though a still small voice, symbolic dreams, or faint impression, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in many ways. But in our day-to-day -day lives, it's particularly a knowing or a few words spoken to our hearts. I believe that part, but I do remember when I first got saved, when I first first got saved, I was walking and I, I know it was God. And I heard somebody call me, but my middle name is Christina. So um, I kept hearing my middle name and I'm looking, like I literally walking and I heard my name being called. And I'm looking around to see who's calling me because I was a new Christian. I don't know. So I know somebody's calling my name and I want to know who's calling me. They just kept calling my name. And I didn't know where it was coming from, but it was audibly. It was an audible voice. I heard it. Um, so it can happen. It can. But I, you know, but later on, I, I later on as I became a more mature saint, I realized what it was. But at the time, I didn't know what it was. Some have taught that the Holy Spirit speaks expressively and irrational to prophetic ministry based on the first Timothy 4, 1 and 3. Although the Holy Spirit is certainly capable of making himself clear, these verses are spe specifically referring to a passage Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, wrote in the New Testament about the end times. The entire passage reads... Now, the spirit, it says now, this is uh, 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 3. Now, the spirit especially says that in later days, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies, hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to obtain from foods with which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. There are going to be, it says, giving heed. There are going to be people that are going to fall away from the faith. They're going to be having doctrines of demons, speaking lies, hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding a obtain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe 
and know the truth. So we know they're, they're going to be here. Paul was saying here that the Holy Spirit spoke this to him expressly about a great uh, apostasy. The Holy Spirit told him clearly. He distinguishedly and expressly declared it. Paul was pinning scriptures and the and the Holy Spirit spoke expressively. Keep in mind that prophecy is not on the same level as scripture. No new scripture is being written. Prophetic words must be sustained to the written word. All that said, God is able to make himself clear. Prophetic words should be should not be so ambitious that they could mean anything to anyone. If a prophet is prophesying, the word should be should not be so generic that it would be hard to tell if it ever came to pass. Prophets who prophesy ambitiously generic words or words so vague you can't tell how to apply them are often not hearing from the Holy Spirit, but it are divining seducing spirits, seducing words. Divining seducing words. It's what they're doing. Divining seducing words. And I don't know how much we, we say this over and over again, over and over again, over and over again. But it's happening. Seven ways prophets miss it. I don't believe anyone is 100% accurate 100% of the time because although God communicates clearly, we interpret and share it in our own language through our human perspectives and even biases. So how do we miss it? Here are a few other thoughts. Prophets can miss it because people take their words as the word of God. If people know someone is a prophet, they may seek advice and take the prophet's words as prophetic in natural nature, even if the prophet is th just sharing. God bless you, Titiana. God bless you, Pastor Relitra. Even if the prophet is just sharing their opinion from experience or natural wisdom. And this way, a prophet could accidentally lead someone astray because the inquiry is so desperate for a word from God that they take anything that the prophet says and as a prophecy. And that is so true because I'm telling you, I be, I, I've been experiencing things like people go, this is, this is what I, this is what I want y'all to understand. If, if y'all don't get nothing out of nothing I'm saying today, please get this. When you going on, you going to church or you, wherever you going, don't come to church with your mind. I want the pastor to pray for me. I want the pastor to pray for me. I want the pastor. No, you go to church with your mind that I want God to touch me. I want God to touch me because I, I'm seeing a lot of this happen. A lot of people are going to church and they want the man of God or the woman of God to lay hands with them. When is God? They're being used by God. So it is not even them. It's God. But the mentality is like, I want this person to lay hands on me. And then when the person doesn't lay hands on them, they are discouraged and upset. They upset and they get discouraged. And they leave out of there looking crazy. And I've been seeing this a lot. And I'm like, you know, we got to get to the point that we trust God. And all of us can miss it. Every single one of us can miss it. Like I said, I know I'm, I'm a pretty accurate prophet, but I can miss it too. We read right here that we can't miss it. And if you don't understand a prophecy, ask questions. A lot of us don't even ask. We just be like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yay, 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 yay. We don't even ask. Yes, by Pastor Relitra, they come to church looking for us to always give them a word. It's always us, but you know, get you. when are you going to get to the maturity to get the word for yourself? And when are you going to understand that when you're going to church, you're not going to church for the man. You're going to church for the Lord. He's the one that's going to touch you. And a, a physical man don't even have to touch you. God can touch you. But there are times that some people just need a touch from God. And God will allow the pastor and the prophet to lay hands on you. He will. He definitely will allow them to do that because some people need it. They just need it. I don't know. They just need it. And God would allow that to happen. But we all can miss it at some point or another. I don't care. Now I know. I know when I prophesy, God does it, but I can miss it too. So I we got to be mindful that that doesn't mean you're a false prophet just because you're missing it. Just because you missed the word. It don't mean that you're a false prophet. You just missed it. 
You know, we're humans. We're going to miss it. But what he's saying here is that people go to prophets. And, I, I, and that's true. People come to a prophet and they start talking to a prophet. And then they then we give our, we give what we our advice or whatever because people feel like prophets can't miss it. And it is the reason why people don't ask questions. But prophets can't miss it. I'm not sure, Pastor Religion, have you read have you read this book to us? Because I keep thinking that you read this book to us, but I remember I, I know God told me to read this book, but I kept saying I wasn't Pastor Religion read this book to us in our prophetic school. I don't I don't know, but all I know is that God is telling us that we can miss it. And this way a prophet could accidentally lead someone astray because of the inquiry is so desperate for a word from God that they take anything the prophet says as a prophecy. This is not the prophet's fault. It's not, don't blame the prophet when you keep coming and asking. No, but we, we can all miss. Yeah, we can all miss it. We can all miss it. I said, so this is not the prophet's fault, though I believe prophets should be clear as to when it is their counsel and when it is the counsel of the Lord. For example, when Paul gave advice to widows on remarrying, he said, but in my opinion, he said, in his opinion, it says prophets and prophets are human first and no one is perfect. That's right. Prophets are not God. Thank you, Pastor Religion. No, we're not. Thank you, Crystal. We're not gods. We don't know. Like, I don't know people's business. And honestly, I don't be on my phone. My daughter can tell you. There's, I get calls from time to time, but I don't be on my phone. Most of the time, I'm not on my phone. I'm on, I'm watching things. I'm on, I'm on YouTube and I'm, 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 I'm listening and getting food and, and listening to, you know, teachings and stuff. That's what I'm doing and reading books or something or, or being busy. I, I don't know, but I don't be on there talking because for what? Because what, what happens is when a prophet is always, when a prophet, when you're talking to a prophet all the time and you get to know a prophet all the time, it feels like when I'm giving a word, it's like, well, she already knew that. So that way I cut that off by not speaking to nobody. That way when the word comes, it ain't came from me. And if it's something that is inaccurate, you feel that it's not what I said, then you go to God or you come to me and we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Or go to God actually and ask him, is this really, what, what is it? Is this all for me? Is there something that I should take and something I shouldn't take? Go to him because he's, he's got all the answers. But it's not the prophet's fault, though I believe prophets should be clear as to when it is their counsel and when it is the counsel of the Lord. For example, when Paul gave wise the widows, I remarried, he said, but in my opinion, it would be better for her to stay single. And I think I am giving you counsel from God's spirit when I say this. First Corinthians 7 and 40. Seasoned prophets will tell you if they are speaking their own mind or their mind of Christ. Yes, because it was time I said, maybe, God, maybe this wasn't you. This might, this might be me. This might be me. But never would I come in here and say, I believe. If you a prophet, you better not come on no prophet nothing and say, I believe. You believe. Either you, either it's God or it ain't God. Ain't no I believe. That's the problem right there. I believe, I know in part, and prophecy in part, and that is why. Yes, right, Pastor Religion. You know, we know in part, we don't know everything. But people come, I heard people say, I believe. I believe, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Now, when you start telling me you believe, then I got to check that because you should know. It ain't no I believe. If you're a prophet, either you know or you don't, or don't say nothing at all. Just keep it to yourself until you know. Because that right there could mess somebody up. I be, this is this, this not might be me. I just believe. No, you 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 know, you keep that I believe to yourself. For real. Because you'll mess somebody up with that. I believe. Seasoned prophets would tell you if they are speaking their own mind or their mind of Christ. While it's not wrong to go to prophets for counsel, it's not. Believers must develop a relationship with Jesus and seek his counsel first. Get counsel from the Lord. God bless you, uh, Pastor LaDonna. You will not miss it if you go to him. Prophets can miss it because prophets are imperfect. We're not perfect. So please stop coming to us like we, we're God. We're not. We're, we're not gods. And matter of fact, I wouldn't want to. You know why? Because if I was God, some of the stuff that I've been through and folks done to me, I've probably been like, hmm. <laughs> so I'm glad I ain't God. 
This this I'm gonna be real with it. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna be honest with it. God bless you. I'm gonna be honest with it. If some of y'all was God, some people wouldn't be here today. <laughs> I go to God about every weird people uh, um, word people give me unless it is confirmation. Exactly, exactly. And I always tell God when He gives me a word, please confirm it. I've, I've been telling God this for years. When I give a word, please confirm it. Please confirm it. Confirm it. But I, I, I don't know if you received the word yesterday, Pastor Relief. I had a word for you about your enemies. And God is getting ready to get your enemies. And God is getting ready to bring them down. Woo, God, I feel the Holy Ghost even now. Woo, I saw you praying. And I seen you in your house praying. And I heard what you was telling God. And God said, it's enough now. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You've been quiet. You've been humble. You stood your ground. But now he says he's going to intervene. And I believe he, no, I don't believe. Let me not just, no, I don't believe. I heard him say, you're going to see in days. It's, you're going to see some something in, in days. There's going to be days. You're going to see it. You got to go back to the prophecy. I don't remember everything, but he did say, your enemies that's been speaking stuff and praying against you because they've been praying against you. Just to let you know, they have. They're in trouble. They're in trouble. And they're in trouble because you stood still. The Bible said, be still and know that I am God. You did not fight the body. You let the Lord fight it. But God said, enough is enough. This has been going on for a long time. I've seen people on the phone. I've seen leaders on the phone calling other leaders and running their mouths. I've seen it clear as day. Yes. And you, and you, I'm not going to say, you mentioned it, you know, you, you could go back and listen to it, but. I, you, 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 you were tired. I, I can tell you that much. You were tired. And when is this going to stop? Well, God said it's going to stop. And he said, within days, you're going to see. Oh, I feel God. Jesus. You're going to see enough is enough. And God also said, you're doing his will. You're in his will. What you're in his will. Even I said it yesterday. What's your purpose? I have my own purpose. She has her own purpose. Her purpose in my life was to put me back on track to obey God and to ordain me to the place where I should have been a long time ago because I know I should have been there a long time ago, but people would not do it. But she was obedient. That's her position. Her job is to teach and put you in the position that God wants you to be in. And then after that, it's up to you to do what you need to do. Now, after she does that part, she's already did her part. So it's, your, it's up to you. I know it. The Lord said that. that. That's why the Lord is going to be. He, you go back, Pastor Religion, and just listen to it because I, I don't remember everything. But I know that in days, God said it yesterday, in days, you will see in days. And there's a bunch of snakes and them snakes, the grass has been cut very low and them snakes are slithering. They can't run. The true colors is coming out. God is about to show you. You're going to see. Enough is enough. We, we, we just got to. Just believe and trust God. And the fact of the matter is she still kept loving on God. She still kept, you know, she didn't retaliate. She didn't. And that's, some of us need to stop retaliating and let God handle it. Because when God handles it, baby, you don't, let me tell you something. You don't want God to handle this stuff. You really want to, the, 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 these people, when you stop, when you, when you, when you stand still and let God fight you, you, the, the, your enemies are really going to be in trouble. Because when we do it, it ain't going to be as harsh as it is when he does it. Oh, yes, he loves you, but he chases them he loves. But he will punish you for the things that you're doing. Okay? I'm going to tell you something. There are real witches in the church. There are real witches in the body of Christ that cause themselves leaders. There are real witches that are doing things that God said, they're coming down. They're coming down. Because... God has leaders that are doing the job, but then you got these witches that are keep bringing distraction, being comfort, confusion, and all kinds of mess. And God said, "No more, no more." That's it. He's gonna put an end to it. He's gonna put an end to it. Trust me when I tell you. I heard him. He's gonna put an end to it. So prophets can miss it because prophets are imperfect, and it says, "And only perfect prophets was Jesus." We are not sinless like he was. Therefore, we are prone to pressures, prejudice, party lines. Yes, they are, Pastor Leecher. 
I know some of them. God showed me some of them. I know some of them. It ain't one or two, it's a few. <laughs> I'm not at liberty to speak nobody's name on here or say anything, but I promise you, they didn't, they, they don't, they get ready to meet their maker. The authority of the prophetic words prophet releases does not depend on the prophet's own perfection, but the prophet's character can certainly hinder our prophetic ministry. Oh God. Okay, Father. I remember sharing this with Pastor Relitra that God showed me this a couple of days ago. I, I don't know if it was last month or two months ago. The Lord showed me a bunch of uh, the coffins. I'm telling you, God is not playing. I'm afraid. That's why I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it right with everything, every person. God showed me coffins and I seen not one, but a few coffins rolling across the, um, the, uh, you know, the pulpit. I seen it. He showed it to me. He's not playing any games. He's not going to keep playing with witches. He's not going to keep playing with these warlocks. He has greater power than us, especially when you're living right and you're doing the will of God. God has your back a thousand million percent. And people keep playing and thinking that they're going to get away with it. And God has a time. You're on ball time. Some people are on ball time. And when your ball time comes to an end because you refuse to repent because you want to be hard-headed and you want to be unforgiving and you want to hold on to bitterness, then you're going to meet your God. You're going to meet your God. And I know some people that she, when she said, yeah, I know I, I'm telling you what does God saying. Thus said the Lord. I can say that. Thus said the Lord. He showed it to me plain as day. They're going to be coffins. And I, and it wasn't, it was leaders, leaders that refused to repent. That's it. I, I, God bless them. God have mercy on them. I've been praying for God to have mercy on them. I asked God to have mercy on them, have grace on them. And I told God to please let them repent because God does not want to see any of us go have to go through that. But if you keep not repenting, there are consequences. The Bible says, suffer a witch not to live. I didn't say that. It's in the word. It's in Exodus. Suffer a witch not to live. Better stop playing. It says, when prophets insist, they never miss it. They have already missed it. Pride comes before the prophetic fall. So I'm going to stop right here, you guys. This is already 11.08. I'm going to stop here. Tomorrow we'll get back to um, human language is imperfect. Um, and then we'll continue to go on with this, but I'm, I, I just, I'm, God, I'm letting God change me. I'm letting God change my thoughts. I'm letting God change my character. And I also want to thank Pastor Alicia because I know she has been praying for me. Um, I know she's been praying for changes for me and my ministry and my character and my approach. I know she's been doing that and I'm very grateful. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. And I'm getting emotional because I know that you've been doing that. And I thank you because I have been asking God to do that for me. But sometimes you need somebody. This is why I don't understand when people say, I don't, I, I, I don't need nobody over me. I don't need nobody. No, you need, everybody needs somebody over them because there are things that you, they, they can see that you can't see. You always, I don't care how big you get. You always need somebody over you. I don't care how big your platform will ever get. You always need somebody that you can go to. You always need somebody that you can go to that is watching over you. Because God did it that way. He made it that way. So thank you guys for coming. God bless you. I hope you receive something. Please start sharing the broadcast. I'm not sharing the broadcast because I want a whole bunch of people to come on here asking you to share the broadcast because as you share the broadcast, even if they don't come on here and they go back and listen, somebody is going to get something from it. That's going to change their lives. And that's the whole goal. We, I'm not on here because I want fame and fortune. I'm on here because somebody needs to change their life. Somebody needs to be delivered. Somebody needs to be healed. Somebody needs to be saved. And just scriptures that you put on Facebook or, or little things that you put on Facebook can change somebody's life. And if I can just say this and just share this little word of wisdom to some people that are leaders and I'm probably, I've been at fault for it, but I'm really trying to stay away from it. Let me just give you a little bit of wisdom. 
Don't go on Facebook talking about I'm ready to give up or God, I'm tired. And you know, that makes you look like not real good as a leader. I'm just frustrated. When you go to your, you go to God with your frustration. Don't you don't put your frustration out on Facebook. And we are guilty, and me too. But I've, I, I've seen that the other day. I don't be on Facebook as much as I used to be. I, I'm too busy. But I said, Lord, what is going on? And then people talking about, oh, yeah, no, we frustrated. No, no, no. You tell that man of God or woman of God, delete that post. Delete that post. Because when you post and stuff like that, it's not making you look real good. And I'm guilty of it in the past. I am, man. I'm going to say it. I'm guilty. But I'm, I'm letting God change me and change my character, change my mindset, change the way I think, change the way. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to confess something. Even with Pastor Leecher, the enemy does fight me so much about Pastor Leecher sometimes. He will, oh, look, she's doing this and she's saying this and she's saying that. And it don't even got nothing to do with me. But the enemy just tries to plant that ugly seed. And this is why you got to know the difference between the devil and God. So you can say, shut up, Satan. Because every time I be in my kitchen, I be telling him to shut up. Shut up. Don't talk to me. I know it is. It, it, don't talk to me. Because he plants seeds. Some of you need to start telling him to shut up. He'll come and say these things and it's not even God. But he wants to bring confusion and division and that's how he does it. But I tell that devil to shut up. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Don't speak to me. I do. I speak to him loud. Don't speak to me. Don't, don't come speaking to me. I want to hear nothing you got to say. But he does do that. And I know if he does it to me, he's doing it to some of y'all. I know. Okay? So we're going to ask God today to cover our minds with the blood of Jesus. And we're going to ask God to give us sensitivity to his voice. Sensitivity to know when it's him and when it's not him. Father, we ask you for sensitivity to know, Father God, when it's you and it's not you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for the favor of God upon your people, Lord. And you guys, I'm not going to pray this, the prayer of favor because you guys, it's already on my Facebook and I will re repost it again. You guys can go in there and read it yourself because when you're reading it yourself, it's better because you're uh, pronouncing and um, decreeing it on your own life by your own mouth. Because I'm decreeing it from my mouth to you, but you can decree it on your own mouth, from your own lips. So, Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Father, for every leader. Thank you for Pastor Religion. Continue to bless her. Continue to lift her up. And I'm going to say this, too, before I stop praying. You you folks that keep saying y'all praying for her and you're not praying for her, God says he getting ready to show, show her who you are. And y'all ain't going to be doing, your intercessory time is going to be over because you're not praying. God bless you. God bless you, man, uh, Evan. God is not playing around. Stop saying you're praying for her when you're not. You're not. You're not doing it. Or 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 the weight that the weight that she's been experiencing wouldn't be on her like it is. You're not. Stop lying is what I'm trying to say. Stop the lies. God hears you and sees everything. He doesn't miss anything. Some of you are going to be very mad when she sits you down. Oh, well. Father, I thank you. You're going to be mad because she's going to sit some folks down. Thank you, Father. Bless Lord Jesus. Yeah, she's going to sit you down in love. She's going to sit you down in love so you can get it right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for those that have came on here. I thank you for those, for your mercy and your grace, for the love. I thank you, Father, that we don't have to do anything to get anything from you because you are a loving God. The only thing we need to do is obedient. Deuteronomy 38. You're the head and not to tell. You're above and not beneath. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed. He's giving you power to attain wealth. Put on the whole armor there. You'll be able to withstand the, the walls of the enemy. Long as good it up about the truth. Breastplate of righteousness. Feet shot with the preparation of peace. Shield of faith. Helmet of salvation. And sword of the spirit, which are the word of God. Don't ever leave your house without it. Put it on. Stand firm. Fight this good fight of faith. Ask God to uh, bless you with your, uh, to uh, increase your talents and your spiritual gifts. Ask him to show you your talent or in your spiritual gifts. Remember, spiritual gifts are surprising. God will just hit, it, hit you with it. Talent, you have to develop it. Develop your talents. Develop your talents. 
So you could become that entrepreneur that God called you to be. So you could become that millionaire that God has already spoken over you. Develop your talent. Ask God to help you develop your talent. And then don't rush them either. It could happen overnight. It may not. Develop your talent. But do it through Christ. And ask God to, 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 to you know, stir up the gifts in you. Stir up the gifts. Stir up every gift, Lord, that's in us in the name of Jesus. Every gift that's in us. Stir it up, Father, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Stir up every gift in us. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for today. I thank you for your people. I thank you, Father God, that every plot and plan of the enemy is destroyed this morning. I thank you, Father God, for your mercy and your grace. I thank you for traveling mercy. I thank you for protection as we go out of our homes. I thank you for the angels of the Lord that are encamping around and about us. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you are a great and mighty God. There's nothing impossible for you, oh God. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you're touching those all over the world, those that are in prison, those that are going to court, those that are in juvenile hall, those that are our, our Father God, our, our, our convalescent homes, those that are in foster homes, foster children, begin to expose things, Father God, that are not right. Begin to lift up your family, your people, Lord. These are your people. These are your children, your sons and daughters. And Father, I pray that you lift them up above every circumstance and situation today. Walk up and down hospitals. Oh God, we send your word to heal. We send your word to heal. There's no distance in prayer, Father. Help us to pray, Father. Help us to really have a great prayer life and a good relationship with you, Father God, that we begin to manifest the signs and wonders and miracles that you want for us. You already left it for us to do. You've already done your part. Help us to do our part. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God. And I thank you for your favor. Your favor for all the all your people today. Your favor. Your unmerited favor. Your uncommon favor. Favor with everyone we come in contact with. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We love you. We magnify you. We give you all the glory today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. I'm going to start on y'all shirts, okay? I'm going to start. <laughs> I'm going to get y'all shirts out. Amen. God bless you guys. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. And I will be back on Friday for the women's meeting. I'm sorry that the last two Fridays I just needed some rest. I really did. Uh, but I will be back on Friday. Amen. So God bless you guys.